So real quick, I just want to do a review of this mold that I got off Amazon. What um, I did is I made this little plywood sled to basically give it some support. And I'll put it in there and show you. Made the uh, first tray. Um, and I put these flakes in here, which were like um, for garage epoxy floors. I did get some air bubbles, which I tried to like dremel the holes out and then went back in and um, I put tape over it. So some of them, it kind of blended. That one, I didn't put tape over it and it was there and it come through. And then some seat down in my mold on these corners and it kind of made like a weird little um, layer. And I'm kind of scared to sand it and polish it, so I'm just going to leave it as be. You can kind of feel it, but that was the first tray. The bottom, though, what I noticed, it's like the bottom, I'll show you when I flip it over, it doesn't set up high enough. Uh, so what I ended up doing was I kind of 45 the edges all the way around with the table saw. You can kind of maybe see on the edge. And then went back in and re-poured this other layer. It's kind of hard to get these flat, so you can see even though, like I re-poured it, I, maybe I didn't put enough on there or what. I wish I had a drum sander, like you see. I got a planer, but you can't really do epoxy on planers. But if I had a drum sander, I could run that through. So that I'm happy with. This is one that I just recently did. So I'm going to set it in there so you can see uh, what it, how it fit in the mold. Sorry, doing this one-handed with the phone. So you can see how that is. Of course, I've got these wooden stars that's setting up, so I got to go. And I think what I'm going to do on this is I'll sand it all down smooth, try to get some of this foil maybe to come off that's on there, and then put just like a skim coat of clear on the bottom, uh, redo it. And so, you know, if you do that, you kind of don't really get any marks. But to un undo this, I've already popped it out, but like I see people struggling. You just kind of pull it along the edges and work it. If you have any other trouble, you can do compressed air. I learned that from a so needless to say that's what that's what mine come out to look, to look like so I did a little flag motif unfortunately like the red and the white when I tried to pour stripes and I tried not to mess with it then you can kind of see the stars that's in the side the ones that was sticking up some of these floated so you might want to do it in layers where you pour like a thin layer that's what I did so these must have stuck down but then these ones it's kind of buried they were the floaters and I had to keep pushing them down in and then you mess your collar up. But what I was saying about the sides not being high enough, um, like if I put this little box there, you can kind of look. It looks like enough, but like I just wish these were like, if they were like an eighth inch to higher, it would make this surface a little thicker. Um, one of these, like right there, it looks like it's got like a little bow to it. Maybe I'm just being a perfectionist, but... The average person would never see it. But then also that would help with like this here where it flashed over. This one I actually stuck packing tape around it. And then I kind of messed up and got it where it bled down in some. But that's what that's what I did this uh, plywood for was because like I didn't want it to bow actually out. But so I did the first one that way. And like I said, it had straight sides. So most of my friends, coworkers, whatever, I've been showing them. And of course... I read where somebody said it took 500 milliliters. I think this one I did like three and then maybe another 100, 150 to finish the bottom, maybe. I saw someone said 500. 500 seems like a bit much. Four was what I did with this, and these little stars ain't, and foil ain't taking up that much. But um, I, I would say 500 would be the absolute max, but you got to figure that's a lot of epoxy, so... Trying to think of ideas what to do next. My mom said something about keys, like a bunch of old keys. And I thought that'd be kind of cool, like a key tray. Um, I think I want to do one with like straight dollar bills. Just do like dollar bills. I did a I did a bookmark. Unfortunately, it's so rough. I did a bookmark with like this shredded paper. So it kind of turned out well. But I thought maybe some crinkle paper would be cool. You know, because the surface ends up being smooth. You know, as long as you don't fool with it. My problem is I always won't fool with these. You need to let them. I got like a little messed up spot. You got to just let them set. You got to hit them with the heat gun a good bit. But I've done some other stuff. I've got some different foils and stuff. Like I was making these West Virginia University Mountaineer themed um, keychains. That one. See, I started sanding the flashing off the bottom because it's like this little foil stuff. So, like here's a state. You can see the flashing because I over poured it. 
So, unfortunately, that's like I said, if I had a drum sander, which, you know, they're like 800 bucks, and I'm about to uh, have to buy one, I could just take some double-sided tape, stick it down to a board, and just run them through multiple times till it did a smooth surface. And then, basically, you just do a light coating of some clear on it, seal it, and then that way all of this cloudy and any holes can kind of go away. But, eh, you know, just kind of, I, I did some epoxy work on jet skis in the years past, fixing jet ski hauls I crashed, and, um, you know, something, you know, we wanted to do a fun project at home during the pandemic, and I said, well, let's do this. So I got a bunch of money tied up in it. Get, get you one of them silicone. This is a Rockler, but get you a silicone mat. I got these silicone quote-unquote brushes from Amazon. It's just like a, a mermaid tail. <laughs> There's no brush to it, but that's what I use to kind of paint the mold and get a sticky surface and then I took like my little stars and stuck them down so you know you want to have something cover them that's like all of these it's smooth you can't catch a nail on any of it so that's good whereas this one those little flakes eh. what I should have did was paint a layer and then take the flakes and mix some in so that's where I recommend like I've got like multiple small silicone mixing cups but do like small batches um, and then sometimes, see this stuff will want to float. So then sometimes what you should do is like pour it and let it get tacky, then sprinkle some more on, okay? And then like let it set a little longer and then those will kind of, or maybe even do like a, just a light brush, like clear over. So, you know, like to do a pour like this, like in layers, it may take hours because you have to let it set up for like an hour and then do another pour. And you want it to be a little bit tacky in between layers. But that way, um, that way it would, it would, it would stick and like stuff not float. So this, I kept pushing them down, but, um, and then let it set in the mold for like a good couple days. This was one day. I probably should have left it another day, but they, it gets harder over time. Like this one, I could probably twist it more than like with this one I can. So, but then I bought a bit to round over these edges once I sand and trim these off. It's like an eighth inch. I may go to a quarter inch, which is about, you know, well, that's probably like an eighth. But I rounded this one over, this other. You probably can't even see it. But I rounded it over, and it had a nice little edge to it. So it, it took away, like, the little sharp edge. But I really wish I had a drum sander, run it through there two or three times, get it good and flat, and then just paint on a coat of clear to get the cloudiness to go away and then it's sealed you know you probably have to watch it doesn't run down the sides and stuff but um you could always put tape around it if you wanted like packing tape and then peel it off and then run the route around the edge but you know that's the bottom no one really sees that so like i said i don't know what i'm gonna use it for you know use it for throwing junk in i guess but and then I always take, like this was the other one the other day. So you can see how this stuff floated. It was mixed in, and you can see the clear. Um, but this was like, so this green, that was from another one. The blue was from something else I did, and then this was from the uh, paper one. So I think I papered looking there. But that's that's kind of the whole thing is just finding unique stuff. You know, like, I guess you can do pictures. Um, I think I'm going to try maybe a Red Bull can. I drink a lot of Red Bull. <laughs> so I was thinking about taking and cutting Red Bull can, if you ever seen that Red Bull art of the can. But then also, um, basically just, you know, uh, that's what this paper's for, is run. I thought about running the Red Bull can down through the shredder. So I thought about doing, um, like, ne that neon paper, and then I got a gift or something come from uh, a friend, and it had it had this paper. So then I kept it, and I tried to bookmark, but the bookmark's just not really thick enough, even if I go and I sand it down. So, But the Red Bull, I thought about running it through my paper shredder and having little Red Bull shards of aluminum. That's kind of what this aluminum, it's like this aluminum flake, whatever. It's like it's like, it's like like foil, and it's so fine. and But it gets goopy, so it's like here you can feel it, and that's what I was saying. If I had a drum sander, run it through there. I mean, I can take my hand, uh, DA Orville sander and go over it, but... You know, you're not getting it as even, whereas the drum sander, you get it nice and flat and even. Because i got to sand down this wood anyway, and then you'll want to seal it. But I was trying to do those. Of course, the problem was when it's upside down, they kind of want to go in this orientation. But when you have it like this and you're looking through, you want them to look like normal stars, right, with the point up. So, like, some of these are rotated. So, you know, it, it works. I'm not going to complain. I'm happy with it, you know. If I get the light out of there. I mean, I wish the red was more red, and I wish the white was more not bled in. 
But the other thing to remember, too, when you're doing this casting, so like see how the blue's in the upper left like a flag? Right when I poured it, it hit me because I almost put it over here in this corner. You got to do mirror image opposite or else it um, basically what will end up happening is it would have been wrong. <laughs> you know, it'd been the, this, the blue would have been over here, so it would have looked totally wrong. But, you know, I'm a WVU grad, so I'm thinking I'm going to try to do one. Maybe it's like the blue and gold with a flying WV. And I started to talk about there about pictures, what I saw a girl on YouTube doing, which I'm going to upload this video to YouTube. People probably laugh at it when I don't really care. I watch a ton of YouTube, but it's definitely harder to make these videos than, uh, especially to edit them and all that. I'm just doing this in one take and posting it. So, but you have to take and laminate. So take a laminate or laminate it. Now, I don't know if like the edge of the lamination will disappear like in the, uh, in the epoxy, but we'll try. So I think I'm going to do a small one. Like I've got a small coaster mold. So I'm going to try one of them. We'll see what happens. But Basically, that's my American flag tray. So, you know, we got some friends wanting some different stuff. So, it's all just kind of like uh, try it and see. My recommendation is don't get too crazy. Like, this was probably a little overboard because I had four mixes. I had clear. I had the white, the red, the blue. Um, and then I had a clear with the aluminum in it. I could have done it without the aluminum powder. I was trying to, I don't know what I was going for, just some other effect. I've got these little beads and I've got glitter and I've got, you know, there's like little glass stuff I could put in there. But that's probably the tops because you got two different mediums you're putting in there. And like I said, well, three different colors with the two different clears, but you get my point. And then uh, that guy that I watched, Nick, Nick Z, I can't pronounce his last name, but he does awesome turning. But he did one the other day where I saw red. And so I mixed that blue and I mixed that red pretty strong with the coloring. You can see here it's probably a little bit more, but... Of course it doesn't ever show up on video and it looks better if it's laying down too but the light glare so but needless to say that's kind of where i'm at with it um definitely for the 20 bucks that the tray cost but you're probably looking 20 bucks in epoxy and other crap so you know i doubt anybody will buy these but it's just something to do so you know increase my artistic ability so to speak now if i had a cnc router where i could carve crap in it and report that'd be cool too but that's uh on the next wish list other than the drum sander. So, see you guys.